on something else. That's what phallus means. So when you when you look at the male, uh, uh, you know, uh, physiology, then it makes it a beautiful thing. So, oh wow, that's a physical manifestation of this action of God. You know, it's, it's the man's action of moving out from himself towards the beloved. You know, to penetrate the beloved lovingly. Now, to me and you. That's perfectly beautiful. Yes. But there's so many, they go, oh, they cringe. How can you say that? And that's because, and this is a threshold we have to cross, their starting point and their ending point is that, you know, when we come down to it, and this is what Chris keeps telling them, you are you are insisting that sex is bad, period, and you cannot see it in any other way. Well, that's they the- think that sex is sex um, is bad in terms of us trying to sexualize things. They believe that when we're talking theology that sex as a verb has nothing to do with theology. The fact that we're trying to, they think we're somehow trying to insert it and that that is what is, is leaves a bad taste in their mouth and they're not realizing the other truth, what I just said, which is that the only way God created us male and female, he created us in his image and that the only way we can even encounter or un- understand the Holy Family, the Holy Trinity, or what it means to love another person is very intimately tied to our bodies because it speaks a yeah. spiritual, theological, mystical truth of receptivity and being open. And that doesn't mean legs open in a sexual way. It means it's if we're body and soul, then our soul somehow is also mystically opened and, right. and that's part of, of a, you know, it's almost as if they're only talking about bodies. Whereas theology of the body, we're trying to make them see that this isn't just about bodies. This is about right. a mystical, spiritual reality. And why is it that they're severing the two and they're thinking, they're trying to physicalize everything? Yeah, they're physicalizing. They're right. teasing up yes. to that, but that's what they're doing. Right. They think that when we're talking about something being a phallic symbol, that we're trying to turn it into a penis, which is a biological and na- anatomical body part. Yeah. And yeah. that's not at all. That would be disgusting. They would, we, we too, I think, Father, would knee-jerk and say, no, no, no. You're missing right. the bigger point. We're talking about when you look at the functionality of something. What is it? It's it's something. And maybe this is what we need to do, Father, is maybe if we could get them to understand. Okay, remember I was telling you before that we need to help lay a guideline for a theology of what something's speaking. So if we say, for instance, that an act of sodomy isn't merely a anatomical part of a man's body going to another anatomical part of one's body but if you look at it in terms of what it would say as a is a theology is it would be speaking a horrific blasphemy it says the very part of a man's body that God has made so to reveal he is called to like you said with this Jewish tradition with the you know the circumcision the very intimate part of his body where he is called to be a gift of himself to lay his life down in every aspect for his beloved bride that he is then taking that very part of his body that has the seed of life to be a co-creator with God to give himself in a life-giving act and he's putting it with the place of a body that a can't accept that because it's a place of defecation, a place of death. It is the place that the God has has created on the body to keep us alive by getting rid of waste and refuse and the very part that would would bring that would bring death if we couldn't do it and uniting the two together and so it it, it would speak a, a, a theology as blasphemy, right? Yes, that's exactly what it is. So yes. if they could understand that then they would see, that theologically, it's spe- and I think they would agree, right? That it's speaking a theological blasphemy more than yeah. a heresy. It's a profanity. A, it, it is a perversion, but it's even worse than that. It truly would be a demonic action because yeah. it would be striking at the very heart of, of both God the Father, God the Son, and God the Holy Spirit because it is rejection of all of that, and and it... it, right. it so uh, maybe we need to help them understand that. Yes, yes, and 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 to do that, what you just described. See, they can probably understand. They can think mystically in the negative. Yes, like you said, I think you're right. They would probably understand that. Yes, oh, yeah, that's right. It is a blasphemy. Right. Okay. We'll flip it into the positive yes. now, and see that same action mm-hmm. only between a man and woman 
as sacramental, right. as holy. So then, you know, we can, go, go ahead. No, it's a mystical. Well, I was going to say that that way we even can understand lesbianism, sex. Um, would be a blasphemy because it's it's showing a barren room, n denying the gift, not receiving a gift, and closing the womb. So there is no fruitfulness. There's no possibility of fruitfulness. So their bodies are speaking a language of blasphemy against the Trinity because it is a very rejection of receptivity because there's nothing to be open to. Right. And so if they could understand that when we look at a woman's body in terms of being called to receive theologically, we're not talking about penetration or sex at all. We're talking about we, are, we, we enter into God's plan for love and union and communion when we understand what the action is speaking on, on that supernatural plane, on that mystical reality. So you just use the magic word. And that's what I think maybe can also help, help our critics is that it's not the physical object it's the action mm -hmm. the action you know sexual action is an is, is participating in the action of god you know god you know as you say the, the receptivity within the trinity the 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 phallic action of god moving out to his beloved it's the action that yes it's but the action has to be manifested in something physical yeah so it happens to be you know our sexual parts but what we're really focusing on is the action. You know what is happening. This is a this is mirroring or participating in this action of God. Well, it just so happens that it <coughs> takes you know, the the body parts to do that. I want to use something that's non-sexual to make this point. Um, Zachary King, what you remember? Zach, Zachary King spoke at your your parish, and I just you know met him not this last week but the weekend before, and he was talking about how he was in a satanic cult for 26 years as a high wizard, and when he was talking about how he was baptized in the urine of over a hundred members of the satanic cult mixed with pig's blood, right away in my mind I was thinking about what that meant on a spiritual level and what I believe that that meant, and I asked him and. He he just kind of chuckled and said, how do you know these things, Christina? You're the only person I've met that's never been on this side of the cult that seems to get this. And I was thinking about theology of the body. Because when you open yourself to what theology of the body is, and folks, it's not about sex as a verb, okay? It's about something mystical, something, something so much more profound that we have lost a sense of. And that's why the devil's wreaking havoc in our world is we have lost our ability to understand how every single thing we do physically it, it is some kind of manifestation of a spiritual truth of what we do or don't believe. And I was thinking, okay, again, back to the fact that when we urinate, that that's getting rid of impure water. The water in our bodies that is impure, that would, that would you know, make us go into kidney failure if it stayed in our bodies, it would kill us because it's impure, it's dirty, is urine. And the pig's blood is the very thing that is reason why the pig, first of all, in Old Testament was such a dirty animal that the Israelites, the, the Jews, were told not to eat it because it was unclean. So it was a filthy animal, but it was also the animal that the, that the devil was cast into and then ran off the cliff. So it is the most unclean of animals, which is the opposite of the spotless lamb. So if you take the opposite of the spotless lamb, it was a foreshadowing of Jesus as that paschal lamb that was shed his blood for us and see that this was part of you, you know, a sacrifice up until the new covenant, then the devil has taken both impure water, it is, de it is death instead of life, which is what water is. Water is, is to bring us into spiritual life. And it's the joining of the two so that we are rejecting by, you know, he was submerged, he said, into urine from the, the, the bodies of these people and the pig's blood. And so he has physicalized a rejection of the life-saving water of baptism of what because he was baptized uh, a Baptist in the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. So it was a rejection of his life-saving baptism by making it into death, but also equating um, himself not only to an animal but submerging it into this unclean uh, so if the devil would have you know the blood of his blood it, it would be pig's blood so I was thinking that's that's the spirit it, it wasn't just hey let's just mix urine and pig's blood I think there is a, re a spiritual truth in that that was being yes. a theology that was being spoken oh absolutely because the devil gets it it's plain as day 
my goodness, I can't imagine that. I thought it's so obvious. And then, don't forget, blood, blood and water. But as you say, impure blood and pure water. Yes. What flowed from Christ's side? Blood, blood and water. water. What did Bishop Sheen, and based on, of course, the Church Fathers, say to priests? And I always play with on a tape whenever I'm with groups that I'm talking to, and I suspect there may be Manichaeans there. I play it because, you know, they'll accept Bishop Sheen. Yes. He says this is the with Christ spiritual seminal fluid. Because the water, the, the water and blood that flew from his heart when it was pierced. Yep. Yes. Se Go ahead. Was the quote it, it, seminal fluid? It, his spiritual seminal fluid, spiritual. and he bases this on the Church Fathers, like Augustine and also Chrysostom says that Christ gave himself up on the cross and he united himself with his bride in a spiritual intercourse on the cross. On the cross is the consummation. That's why he says consummatum est in Latin. People, you know, I ask people, what's Christ's last words on the cross? It is finished. No. Was, it is it, in Latin, it, it is consummated. <coughs> and, well, and this is why he waited, you know, when he said uh, at, at, the, uh, you know, at the wedding of Cana, you know, this is not my time. And, and when was his time? His time would be at the real wedding on the cross, in which he would turn to his mother and say, woman. The only other time he called a woman was at the wedding of Cana. In other words, it was a spousal reference. So here you have the consummation of the cross of the new Eve and the new Adam, and, and the the you know with the, the literally the, the spiritual semen from Christ coming from his side, as Bishop Sheen said. And you should hear this tape, Christina. He says it to the priest, and he only shouts it at them. He says, "You guys have to understand this." And basically, what he's saying. And now, so when you bring this up about the, 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 you know, the bread, that's another mockery of the blood and the, the impure blood and impure water, of the, of the consummating, life-giving act of the bridegroom Christ on the cross gets mocked with the same elements in, in the baptism of the, of the devil. Well, Father, I, it's so clear to me, it's so clear to you, I, I wish that we could, you know, you'd think that the very people that would desire to enter into this because truly I believe it is the antidote to the demonic trinity that's at work through sex education, abortion, and contraception. And theology of the body is the antidote to sex education because it it, it, re, it takes it off the biology of bodies and mm -hmm. as objects for use and it puts it and places it back to where it belongs. Not even male and female he created them. Um, because even animals are male and female, but I believe from woman and man, because only right. human beings are man and woman. Right, man and woman. And the uh, you said it one way, another way I say it is that the algebra body is the dagger that will be thrust into the heart of the culture of death. Yes, amen. 